Hello and welcome to the housing.com webinar on the future of senior living projects in the country. I'm Tumur Ghosh, Editor-in-Chief, Housing.com News, and joining us for this discussion today are our panelists. Ankur Gupta is the Joint MD for Ashiana Housing Limited. Ankur, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Tumur. Mohit Nirula is the CEO for Columbia Pacific Communities. Mohit, great to have you with us. Pleasure and a privilege. And Mani Rangarajan is the group COO for housing.com, makan.com, and proptiger.com. Pleasure to be here, Juma. Yeah. So thank you once again, panelists, for being here. We are in the midst of a pandemic. So obviously, my first question is going to be related to that. In your assessment and observation, how has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted the senior living segment? Ankur, I'd like to start with your assessment. Thanks, Yumar. Uh, as the pandemic has been very sad for seniors specifically, where we lost um, in the first wave a lot of lives yeah. uh, and lots of issues also to deal with uh, from, you know, when lockdowns happen, from conveniences of getting your food, your yeah. maid, your uh, groceries, your pharmacy needs, all of those services got disrupted. Yeah. And what we saw was after the pandemic, uh, you know, the lockdown lifted, we had a lot of demand and just not demand from our seniors, uh, but demand from their kids also making sure that their parents are safe. Yeah. And it's been a, uh, from, from a demand perspective, it's been a phenomenal journey over the last uh, year and a half or so. But even before the pandemic, one of the things which I believe was strongly changing was this idea that people were able to differentiate between an old age home and senior living. And more people are able to differentiate that senior living is a lifestyle choice where you get a lot of uh, great quality life. And I think that's been a big, big boon uh, in the business. Yeah. Mohit, have your observations been uh, similar? Are there any additional observations, you know, that you might have made considering yours is also a, a business with a national footprint? Yeah. So, I mean, we are... We, we are in a stage of our company where we have nine communities uh, which we manage and we are privileged to be serving residents in five cities. Yeah. Uh, in addition, we are, uh, we've launched our 10th project, which is designed by us from scratch in Bangalore. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, when I look at the impact that COVID has had, and Ankur's absolutely right, uh, both seniors and children, when they contrast the experience that seniors have had when they were living either on their own yeah. or in mixed family condominiums yeah. and juxtapose that against the experience that seniors have had who were living in a community designed for them, yeah. uh, the, the comparison is chalk and cheese. I mean, in you have to understand that all of us, uh, seniors, juniors, in between us or whatever, uh, we live, especially in urban India, a life of where we depend on a lot of services yeah. or for a lot of services, we depend on a lot of external agencies. Uh, the gardener comes in to look after the gardener, the cook comes to a cook, there's a driver, there's a maid, there's a cleaner, there's, there's a plethora of people. Uh, and all of them bring the external environment in. Now, when you ring fence a community, Yes. Uh, that means that if you're dependent on people on the outside, uh, that doesn't come, as Ankur was saying, or it brings with it everything that is there outside. Okay. So when, when seniors and their children contrasted it, it's, it's not a surprise that demand went up. Okay. What we've noticed additionally is that in our ready-to-move-in communities where the homes are already ready, we have a waiting list because the need is urgent. Everybody wants to move moving straight away. Where we are under development, a new phenomenon that we have seen is that the buyers have gone younger. So whilst yeah. the youngest used to be 60, 65, yeah. now our youngest is actually 48, but 48 to 55 is the, is the cohort that is now looking at moving into a community yeah. where basically everything that you need is provided by the service provider. And yeah. you can live and do things that you want to do rather than focusing on the things that you have to do, yeah. uh, which is the big differentiator between us, what, what unjustifiably almost is called an old age home versus yeah. a community designed for seniors. Because yeah. this is, in my opinion, going to be the preferred option uh, for seniors going forward. Yeah. 
So uh, Mani, Ankur and uh, Mohit, they've obviously brought in the business perspective. I'd like you to sort of draw a bit from your uh, personal uh, situation and your personal assessment as well. What has been the conversation around your peers, you know, within your business group? Have you seen a shift, you know, in terms of the mindset towards uh, these uh, senior living homes uh, due to the pandemic? Um, definitely, you know, the, on the housing platform as well as uh, on Prop Tiger, we have uh, sold like uh, senior living homes. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that uh, Mohit uh, put across very well uh, is the fact uh, is that uh, these are not old age homes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I can take a minute or two, Jumur, I'd just like to relate my personal experience. Yeah. Uh, so I was living in Silicon Valley and uh, my mother was diagnosed with uh, with early dementia and Parkinson's disease. And, uh, and uh, you know, it, it's very, very difficult to take care of a Parkinson's patient at, at home. And, uh, you know, I, and, and at the age she was in her late 70s, I didn't want to expose her to an assisted care facility, as they call it in the U.S., yeah. uh, because, uh, because as a person is going down mentally, uh, uh, you know, putting them in an alien environment is probably the worst thing to do, which is why I relocated her back to India. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking of options to take. And uh, one of the things I didn't realize then was geriatric care is very, very specialized care, right? So it's a, it's a totally different form of care. Uh, so it's not as usual as calling your general physician home and looking at the patient because uh, the geriatric patient uh, exhibits very, very different symptoms and the mindset is also very different. And, uh, you know, somehow, you know, as I was grappling with things on what to do, I, I decided to like relocate to India. And, uh, you know, when there were a lot of people who advised me to put her into an old age home, as they called it. And uh, I just felt there's a lot of social stigma attached to it. Uh, but now, you know, having been in the real estate business and having an opportunity to visit some of the facilities here, uh, the continued care retirement centers, as we call it, right, the CCRC. Um, I can just see that uh, you know what they're building is a community, right? So it's not a it's not an old age home. It's it's a community uh, where uh, the activities are rich. People socialize with uh, with people of their their age groups. People are much more happier there. And uh, the the one concept that I got uh, you know exposed to is the whole concept of a memory care home, and it'll be great if. Both Ankur and Mohit can can talk about that because I, I felt that if that had been there, I think uh, you know my mother's final years would have been uh, much more happier. Uh, you know, if she had gotten that facility, uh, because I think in India one of the challenges that I face personally and we have seen in the pandemic is the shortage of hospital beds. Yeah. Uh, right, uh, the identification of the precise point at which a person needs hospitalization. Right. Is a saturation level 93 okay for an 80 year, 80 year old person or is it should be 85? That should be something that a medical care provider should find. There's also a lot of shortage of nursing cares. Yeah. Right. Skilled nursing, right? Uh, I mean, you have a lot of people, a lot of nursing agencies who come in and, and, and uh, bring nurses home. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's the right mix, uh, right? And overall, the whole concept of living, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, anti-skid tiles, you know, the grab bars and the alarms, uh, availability of an ambulance and all of all of that. Uh, so that's something which is very, very difficult to replicate at home. And I do know that, you know, there's a social stigma saying parents yeah. have abandoned the children and put them in an old age home. So, uh, you know, so that, that's that's something which all of us have to deal in the environment. But I can see that things are are changing. Okay. And, uh, you know, from my personal experience, what I would advise the audience is, uh, you know, these centers are community centers. And I think people are far happier there uh, mm -hmm. than living cooped up in a home with very little activities to do. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad you, Mani's raised a couple of, you know, really great points. I'm going to start with the uh, social stigma part of it, because I think a decade or so ago, you know, that was really uh, almost like a business hindrance, you know, for these kind of projects. Can, uh, you know, Ankur and Mohit, can you please tell us a little bit, you know, about how as businesses, you know, you have to cope a with this misconception and b do you feel that it's slowly changing and you know people are realizing the difference between an old age home and what a senior living project is all about uncle i'd like to start with your thoughts 
So this was this has been a big issue for all of us. Uh, so what what we have what happens is we get a lot of inquiries of seniors who come in and you know wanted to live a live an independent lifestyle, and they come visit our project. They love it. They see the greenery. They see the club. They see the other people enjoying themselves and want to join. And then they call up the kid, and the kid says, "Hey, you're not going to move to an old age home. There's no way." i can't live with that idea but what's happening lately is that the kids have started understanding it's a different concept and that should parents are like you know money said the parents are much better off well taken care of and yeah. they will not have any kind of headache and uh, that's been the big win uh, i was actually interviewing uh, three uh, 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 nok's children on an interview and i asked them you know what was your first reaction and they said my first reaction was I I didn't want my parents to move to a senior living, and then I said, well, "How did you okay?" He said, "We visited the senior living." So I think information is the very rich part of once you visit, it changes your mind. And if you don't visit, then the social stigma stays in your head if you don't understand the product well enough. Yeah. So Mohit, this is an interesting observation. I mean, traditionally one would think, you know, that maybe the older people, you know, have this misconception, and the younger people are more amenable to changing their mind. This is an interesting a uh, bit of information that Ankur has shared. Has your experience also been on similar lines? Um. So I will have to defer to Ankur's length in this business, right? Yes. Uh, Columbia Pacific communities, while it is India's largest now in terms of number of communities, uh, we've been in the business of serving seniors for the last three years. Yeah. Obviously, you multiply that by the one thousand six hundred homes and the three thousand seniors and their six thousand extended family. It's a lot of uh, concentrated experience. Yeah. 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 But what I do believe, uh, Jhumar, is that the India of today is very different. to the india of 15 years back right uh, the change that has taken place is humongous and i remember speaking with our uh, principal a gentleman by the name of dan beatty who's the who's the 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 principal founder behind the company and he said that you know culturally india has not changed children and parents sitting around a dining table are not going to have a conversation of dad you need to live independently or son i think i'm intruding into your privacy or daughter uh, what will your husband feel about you know those yeah. conversations are still not taking place however while culturally it's not changed circumstantially it's changed completely right in the sense that i'm 55 right everybody in my cohort and one and a half generations going before me and every generation going after me we have invested disproportionately in the education of our children globalization has given them the opportunity to go and work anywhere in the country in many cases anywhere in the world yeah. and as a result children and parents are no longer sitting at the same dining table in many many cases yes yeah. so while culturally both would want to live with each other circumstances do not allow and especially the parents do not wish having given their children wings to fly to be the anchors pulling them back right now under this circumstance where loneliness is the biggest accelerator of aging yeah. Yeah. where your social circle is severely limited the the radius of your social circle is limited by your mobility Yes. first on the driver then on the car then on the parking place then on the traffic level then on the light and the night and so on and so forth yes. slowly you end up on your couch with your uh, remote control it is therefore that senior and and another thing that you have to understand is that the 50 to 65 70 year old of the india of today is not wanting to go one prast into the forest they are still living life fully they are still wanting to engage completely and therefore an environment where all your daily needs are taken care of where there is a a wellness and wellbeing program that keeps you physically fit and mentally alert and intellectually stimulated in a socially active interactive yeah. space yeah what's to say no to right and why would you want to live in a mixed family condominium apartment complex where the maid needs to be coming in and the rwa says yes or no the yeah. driver is allowed or not allowed there are 27 different things yeah. here is a community designed with all your needs in mind 
in our communities, uncles and mine, and all this that are operating at a quality standard that is uh, that that senior living communities should be. Social distancing never took place. Physical distancing, yes. Social distancing never took place. So all this that you heard that the real pandemic is not Corona, the real pandemic is mental uh, uh, loneliness, never took place in our communities because they remained socially engaged, physically distanced, but socially engaged. So uh, listen, there is, there is no comparison between the mind's perception of an old age home and the reality of communities designed for seniors or senior living communities also, there is no comparison between the India of 15 years ago and the India of today, and no comparison between the 65-year-old who was 15 years old, uh, 15 yeah. years back, and 65-year-old of today. Yeah. So we Mohit, so sorry, can I just, sorry. Can I just I, and it's it's a so I agree with Mohit. None of my you know consumers were staying together. But what we have seen in our consumer group is when yes. the parent takes a decision of buying, he will they will just get an okay from an NOK. Okay. The children will just call up the children and say, hey, I'm taking this decision. And when they're looking at that decision, that's when a few issues happen. And most of the independent kind win over that situation. The people who are a little more docile have a little harder time convincing their children. And that's a, that's, that's a big uh, problem used to be, which I yeah. think has shifted uh, gears a lot. Yeah. So, okay, we've, we've spoken about the social needs, you know, but there's another major need, you know, that uh, this community has, and that is medical needs, right? Now, my question is about, you know, a lot of projects that I see being marketed, you know, as senior living projects, I don't see any reference to assisted living facilities. Now, you are both experts, you know, in this segment. Here's what I'd like to know. In your opinion, do you think a senior living project can actually be called a senior living project if it is not in a position to offer assisted living facilities also, because like Mani mentioned, that's a huge part, you know, of the support system that the elderly community need. So uh, Mohit, let's start with your thoughts. Do you think it is imperative that these projects have assisted living facilities as well? Okay, so let me start off by first, with respect and as docilely as I can, rubbish this word called assisted living. Okay. Assisted living uh, is a term that comes from the land of our promoters, uh, okay. the US. Okay. In the US, there are there is what is called independent, because it's highly regulated, you need various licenses to be called an independent living community or an assisted okay. living community. Okay. What is differentiating between these two, first and foremost, are things that activate when you are not able to do your activities of daily living another phrase that is associated with the industry which comes to us from the west activities okay. of daily living when you can't do them uh, then you are supposed to be moving towards the assisted type of living okay. why i rubbish it is because in india we are born into assisted living and we live in assisted living all our lives Okay. When we were born, there is a nanny. When we grew up, there was a maid, a chokidar, a, a, a gardener. A, this a, We've been assisted all our lives till the age of 28 when our mom told us, listen, apne pe khade ho, become independent. And yeah. three months after you moved into your house, she came herself to check cook, lagwa du, maid, lagwa du, ye lagwa du, and you're back into assisted living. Yeah. To me, assisted living... In, okay. Indian, in the Indian context, okay. is when you start to need support in doing things that you were always doing alone. Okay. Having your bath, yeah. going for a walk, remembering to have your medicines. It's when you start to need assistance in okay. being able to look after yourself okay. that you, you would say that, listen, beyond the normal things of housekeeping, maintenance, security, food, beverage, cook, this, that, that now you need something more. Yeah. And I firmly believe that, and that is why, uh, to Money's point about these being communities, when you move in at 55 and 60, you make a whole set of friends around you. You don't want to be moving out of this community at 75 when you, and leave behind this entire support ecosystem that you have 
yeah. to another place to get assisted okay it is our job ankur and my job to make sure that we provide within the existing communities okay. increasing levels of support as your needs change and evolve over time yeah. the other big advantage that we have with the on site nursing care yeah. is that our nurses are able to are spend time daily with you so they are able to detect pallor change without yeah. having to stick you with needles or uh, blood pressure this or that they know aaj humor aap theek nahi lag rahe ho mere ko zara check kar lena to yeah right yeah. so therefore uh, the this the the early detection and the speed of attention is very different and therefore to my mind any senior living community in india must allow for the resident to be with them from the date they enter until the date that they leave permanently there should not be the need to move them out of the community now okay. of course there will always be exceptions that will prove this rule yeah, yeah. but there should be the exceptions the rule should be thou shalt be with me forever for me to look after you yeah uh, ankur like i mentioned earlier you know i have visited some of your projects so you do offer these uh, facilities and you will be aware you know that there are uh, you know projects you know that don't offer these facilities so mohit had a very interesting take on this i'm curious to know you know what your thoughts are on this issue so uh, again we, uh, i agree with mohit we've taken a lot of western concepts obviously senior living itself is a western yeah. concept in its own right right yeah. uh, but what we need to look at is what's the solution we're providing at the end of the day what are the seniors issues as they grow older yeah. and are we able to solve those issues within the community or not yeah uh, and what what one thing i agree with mohit is this idea of aging in place so one of the things we the, the other terminology which people use is aging in place now i don't completely agree that you know where i have a continuing care retirement community aging in place yeah. that the only where retirement communities work is a singular thing okay yeah. i think consumers come in all kinds of different ways and different wants and different way of life i yeah. believe aging in place is a very important aspect of it but is it the most important and that's the only aspect which i will call it a senior living i might disagree with that okay uh, and uh, so at the same time there are going to be some situations like dementia care and parkinsons which yeah. needs a little more assistance and a specialized place might be helpful yeah uh, it also it's not just taking care i think the kind of activities they can do are a little different so kind of programming activities which is good for their mental health or from their physical health improves their quality of life at the end of the day i am a big prominent of the idea that quality of life is more critical than anything else Yeah. So whatever we can do to improve quality of life is something we need to keep learning. And yeah. one of the opportunities as Indian operators we've gotten today is that we have got a clean slate with some already existing knowledge in the West. Yeah. yeah. And and I think one of the biggest challenges as as groups of senior living providers we will have is should we evolve the American way, the UK way or an Indian way which will actually be more beneficial for the consumer, cheaper for the consumer, more active for him more independent for him so he lives yeah. a higher quality life yeah. and, and i think we're all uh, learning and we're trying to figure out what's the best model for that yeah many you mentioned you know that you have been exposed to such uh, projects in the us as well uh, you know an interesting point you know that has come up in this discussion that's been about the fact that you, these projects are still not a uh, regulated you know by a specific body you know that's looking only into senior living projects i understand it's a niche industry still you know it's a smaller segment but it is growing and it will continue to evolve like everybody is established you know demand will increase do you think maybe now is the right time you know for some kind of a regulatory mechanism to come into place for uh, senior living projects or do you think it's still early days for that um i i i think it's still early days and uh, i think uh, in 2020 the government did some work around some senior citizens uh, uh, there was some draft policy and i know that uh, mohit spearheaded one of the cii studies into uh, into senior living uh, but i think the, the 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 concept has to go a little more mainstream uh, before we kind of decide to uh, regulate it yeah right i think it i i still feel it's like early days for regulations there yeah 
So, uh, you know, I'm going to start taking up some of our uh, audience questions, you know, in the interest of time. So, uh, Shankar Narayan Subramanian uh, has a question. He is asking, would you advise buyers to choose under construction projects or ready to move in homes? What is the age limit? What are the facilities, especially medical and about the caretakers? Uh, they they can rent, lease out, or stay there. So I think these are some interesting uh, questions, you know. So uh, what I'd like my experts to do is maybe if you could give some pointers in terms of, A, how do these projects work? Are they uh, or leasehold properties? Are they freehold properties? Can I buy it? Can I rent it out to somebody? I think the other interesting question is, and we were discussing this earlier, right now should they opt for an under-construction project? Is it better to go in for a ready-to-move-in property? So what advice can we give to our uh, audience members? Ankur, let's start, uh, start with you. So uh, like Mohit, uh, all our existing uh, units are uh, not available because the demand is so high. So yeah. only one or two rentals will come a month and very yeah. limited availability. So yeah. most of our consumers are going for under construction property. What most everyone is going for under construction property. Okay. So you have okay. to go for under construction property largely. Okay. Uh, from a perspective of... Uh, Please check the, the, if you're going with some other developer, check their balance sheets, check their credibility, check their past yeah. records yeah. before you go there. Yeah. Uh, before So that you, you're you safe, you're under RERA, that your money is safe on the senior living side. Yeah. Uh, so that is the only check I will have. Otherwise, you would be pretty, pretty good uh, on your decision making. On the, the most homes in India right now are for sale model, uh, so, large, uh, very limited on rental models and uh, okay. uh, very far, far and few between. And uh, if you want to lease, then like in Mohit and my projects, you would be able to lease from an owner who's already bought from us and he will lease it out to you. But that's generally limited time lease because he he's looking to move in after a particular age or a particular event in his family that happens. Yeah. Mohit, do you have any uh, tips for Mr. Shantanarayanan? So, I, a couple of things. <clears throat> the, the success of any company which wants to be long-term in the senior living, senior care, uh, yeah. will lie not so much in the product that is created, but in the services that are provided. Yeah. Uh, all of our residents, without exception, move into our communities from the yeah. best homes of their lives. So yeah. they're not moving for the home. They're moving for the hassle-free, zero-headache lifestyle that they want and the okay. peace of mind that they want that, God forbid, if there is a need for medical support, everything's available on site. Yeah. So really, the decision-making of the buyer should be driven by the services on offer. Okay. And that should be... Once they have reassured themselves that there is a credible track record, demonstrated performance, uh, that should be the reason for deciding. RERA does protect you on the asset for sure, right? So that's one part of it taken care of. But really, this is not an asset purchase. The asset has to be purchased because you need the services that you want. Okay. And because it is a need product, actually neither Ankur nor I can say when's the right time to buy. The right time to buy is when you need it. And when you're 80 or 75, there's no point waiting four years for a project to be ready. And when you're 55, you don't need to be in a tearing rush. Because yeah. the one thing that senior living does, which is opposite to real estate, yeah. is that it appreciate, the asset appreciates in price during the life of the project. Uh, we know how flat prices prices have been during the, pro yeah. the life of the project. We know there is a 5% GST saving sitting at the end of a completed yeah. project. And therefore, even if it goes up by 6, 7, 8%, you save 5% of that, et cetera, et cetera. A senior living project could go up between 18 to 20%, if yeah. not more, during the life of the project. So if you can afford it, if you are happy to wait for it, you're better off entering early because yes. you will definitely make a saving on the asset purchase. Yes. If you definitely need it immediately, then no matter what, you will go for a, for a, for a, for a project which is ready to move in, uh, whichever way. So I had a related question for Ankur and Mohit. Uh, so for example, on the PropTiger side, when we have tried to sell some of these, uh, uh, these projects, right? 
Uh, one of the questions that we get asked is, what is the resale potential? So let's say that I've admitted my parents and they've passed on. So how easy or how difficult is it to resale? I understand that demand for uh, outstrips supply, but is there an enough liquidity in the resale market for these units? Well, I could answer that very quickly. We've got a waiting list at all our communities. By right. hook or by crook, they want to get in, right? Uh, two years back, I would have probably given you a different answer. Today, okay. for love and for money, there ain't a home to move into. The second thing is, and I'm sure Ranko does the same, although we haven't spoken about it. In our company, we have a separate vertical within the sales team, which yeah. works on rental and resale of homes. So okay. because we have this demand, so we have the potential tenant and potential buyer already on our books. Our re residents or owners have the right or their next of kin have this opportunity uh, to come to us and say, listen, can you match us up? And, and we go from there. And, and really, uh, if I was betting my own money, I would actually, uh, and I think Ankur and I have spoken about this, about giving a guaranteed buyback, yeah. saying there'll always be demand. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, there's a there's an audience question. It's on similar lines. But so, you know, I just like to take it up. So Deepak Jambu Sarya is asking that, can you book and move in after say 20 years? Uh, do you need to buy or can rent? I think you've answered that partially. What happens to your unit when you are not alive? So this is an interesting question. So can you do that? Buy now and move yeah. after? So a lot of my buyers do that. Uh, they yeah. buy now and move in later. They rent it for the time being. Uh, there's lots of rentals available. Rentals are also higher as a percentage of property value. <coughs> so generally in India, 2 to 3% is the proper rental values. In senior living, the rental values would be at 3 to 4%, which is a fair uh, premium to the, what the market is. Yeah, and uh, from when when the, the you know so so I have a lot of NOKs and I, I I keep in touch with them. They're you know they're saying that I'll also move into the same senior living because generally people who live in senior living live longer. So if your yeah. parents are eighty five, children yeah. are in the range of fifty five to sixty, yeah. and that's also changing another realm of uh, thinking as we see. And we have a few cases where the children and the senior live. In, in separate units, but in the same project. Okay. Uh, taking that, now there are NOKs who are abroad who have, you know, parents passed away, took the unit, sold it, rented it. You can do whatever. It comes to the children anyway. All right. Uh, I'm guessing, would it be a similar thing for uh, Columbia Pacific as well? To Deepak, I would say that if he wants to buy and move in 20 years later, I would tell him not to buy. By 20 years later, technology would have changed, designs would have changed, style of living would have changed. Uh, everything would have, five years is a long time now in the way things move. So I yeah. wouldn't buy for uh, 20 years later. I would buy what's there 15 years later. Yeah. So I have a question in terms of, you know, so there are two types of projects that we see, right? One is uh, a project that's entirely a senior living community. One is a project, a senior living community within a larger township. Now, as experts, I'd like your assessment on from the end user's comfort and his lifestyle aspirations point of view, is one necessarily better than the other or do they both have their pros and cons? Ankur, what, what do you think? My personal opinion is none. Uh, so we have one uh, project in, so when we developed our first senior living in Bhivadi, which was uh, what we called multi-generational senior living. And we we did, did boundary wall, but it was a part of a larger project where we had villas, senior living, uh, regular housing, and uh, a club and a retail outlet for everyone. Yeah. And what we found from them was that uh, seniors like their own space and they enjoyed the space, their own space more and choose to go to the club when they wanted to. And now we have a senior living where there is no boundary wall and there is a, a, a villa uh, product and we've made senior living in that same and people are as happy. So I don't personally see that, uh, you know, I think I asked a senior, what do you think about multi-generational living? I said, they said, I'm already living in multi-generation. I said, what do you mean? They said, I have a 55-year-old to a 95-year-old. There are already two, two and a half generations living within the space. And it's, 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 it's good enough. We don't need uh, various levels of thinking and grandchildren's come in and, you know, it, it's a community itself. So we haven't seen any kind of challenge in either of the two development quality. 
All right. What about you, Mohit? Uh, are your thoughts on similar lines? Apples and oranges. There are apple eaters and there are orange eaters. Uh, yeah. And there are enough fruit lovers. So uh, there's no... There's no. So, uh, Mani, when the we were... Thing, the one thing sorry. I would... So I, I apologize. The one thing that I would add is that we like communities where your friends and neighbors and neighbors are friends and they are all in elevator right away. So whilst villa communities are good and, yeah. uh, and, and uh, they have, like I said, apples and oranges, uh, over time, the radius of locomotion gets affected by age, yeah. right? And when you are in cities where weather is also an issue, whether it's rain or heat, uh, the more there is horizontal movement to be with friends, yeah. uh, the more it is. Because, you know, you should be enjoying it as much at 55 as, as you will at 95. And therefore, for us, a community where you can take an elevator to the party or to have a drink with your friend or to go for a morning walk, everything's an elevator right away, is much yeah. nicer for us. So. Yeah. Money, uh, like you mentioned, you know, we have sold uh, some of these projects on PropTiger. Are there any insights you can share with us in terms of, A, are they uh, buying under construction or does the preference seem to be for ready to move in properties? Have you seen any uh, trends in terms of, you know, what the age group is, who seems to be buying into these uh, projects? Are there any insights that you'd like to share with us? Well, look, uh, the, the main audience that we have sold to on PropTiger side is uh, from NRIs. Okay. And uh, a, a large part of it is under construction because there's not too many ready-to-move uh, projects which are kind of available. Uh, and uh, I think people out there are uh, pretty concerned in terms of what's the quality of life and more yes. than that, what's the quality of medical care yeah. uh, that uh, people will have access to. Uh, secondly, people pay a lot of attention to the overall design and layout of the apartment, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. do you have the, the grab bars in the bathroom and, you know, all the basics, right? So, uh, I, I mean, you cannot have the fanciest of uh, vitrified tiles in the floor, right? And yeah. it, it just doesn't make sense and uh, uh, kind of thing, right? So I've seen that. Uh, but one of the things, and again, I'm going to use, uh, I, I think this is the first panel, Jamur, where I'm going to ask more questions and I have answers. Fantastic. Uh, You're making have, my have, job have, easier. We have the two legends in the industry who are adding yeah. so much of value. And it's a topic just personally close to my heart. Yeah. So one of the questions we get asked is, you know, what is the, you know, uh, you know, there are people uh, whose parents have, uh, you know, varying issues, right? About 70% of people in, you know, beyond 16, about tend to have chronic illness, vision problems, yeah. cardiac issues and all of that, right? So one of the questions which we get asked is, uh, you know, will they get a hospital bed, right? Yeah. And uh, I think it it is very challenging, right, uh, to, to, uh, to guarantee, you know, a hospital bed. So a lot of people think that, you know, staying in a community means an automatic guarantee of hospital bed. And more than that, the determination is, who takes the decision to move them to the hospital, right? Yeah. Now, because people are NRI. So it'd be great if we can get answers to these two questions. Yeah, um, so this is a fantastic uh, question. So there, to me, there are two kinds of consumer. One would be where they, they are not able to take their own decisions. Largely, we, what we have is customers who are independent to take their own decisions. So number one, we depend on the person to take their own decisions, not even their NOK. Their NOKs are people we inform and keep them with a lot of information. Uh, during the pandemic, I, I don't know who could get a bed. Uh, it was, you know, we, we were all fighting. But in general, uh, in senior living, we do get, uh, we have tie-ups, we have cashless tie-ups, and we do get uh, preference on beds, and uh, we are able to get that quicker. So overall, that works very well for us. And because we have caregiver services and nurses and all of that, we're able to talk to NOKs far better. So the information quality which the NOK gets, one of the biggest fear is that you know how to get a doctor on ground who can tell us all the information so that we can help out. And that is the big win uh, when you come in a senior living community who's giving you the high quality information and keeping you informed and telling you what your parents want and then you can have a discussion with them. And that's been a, a, a big win uh, from a senior living perspective. Okay. Uh, Mohit, what's been the experience at Columbia? So we, we have a, <clears throat> we have a, a fairly well 
practiced protocol on this. We are blessed because our healthcare partners are Columbia Asia hospitals. And that means that we have access to the best advice on the subject. Yeah. <clears throat> Coming back to the this, this issue of guaranteeing a, a hospital bed, I think uh, we know enough cases. But what we have to remember is that the second wave was a black swan event. Yeah. Actually, the first wave was a black swan event. The second wave was a pitch black swan event, right? Yeah. Uh, we can't plan life around what happens when the, there is a third wave, which is like the second wave. What, our protocols, like I said, because we've got nurses and doctors on property and our nurses and doctors know the patients, or not the patients, the residents intimately, uh, and their medical data and records is available with us, uh, our ability to identify a problem is much higher Whereas normally what you will find is anybody, you and me included, will normally rush to the emergency yes. of a hospital where the person standing at the counter doesn't know you from Adam. Yes. Right? Whereas in this case, knowing you intimately already puts you at a distinct advantage to any other person needing help. Thereafter, we have established protocols which take you from your bed to a hospital bed in the shortest period of time. Yeah. And our relationships exist with two hospitals, the closest and the best. The, the two may not normally be the same. Okay. Right? And therefore, the decision on where we take you is taken by a medical professional. Okay. In consultation with either the resident or the resident's spouse or partner or the resident's next of kin. In case it is our recommendation that you move to a hospital, you will need to take a positive decision to override us. Okay. It means if the medical is, uh, expert says move to hospital and you say, I will not, we will record the fact that you refuse. And you, everybody has the right to refuse. It's, we don't become the right, the decision takers on behalf of the residents. Right? That's the second thing. The third bit, which is something that we've learned with the pandemic, is that not everything needs to be either your bed or the hospital bed. So we've actually created a, a zone called an isolation area within the communities where should you be facing some symptoms, they put your spouse to risk. We move you to this isolation unit within the community. So, you know, people still come and say hello. They come and ask you. Your friend on the walk says, hey, they're feeling better today, etc. So, remember, half the time it's in the mind. So, if you're in the community, isolated, not getting exposed to the various virus that are floating in any case in any hospital because that's what they do for uh, the sick people come there, right? Yes. So, there is now an interim place. So, between your bed, the interim bed, and the hospital bed, there is a complete laid out protocol uh, which advises us, advises uh, the resident, advises the resident's spouse and the resident's children on what protocol should be followed while leaving the ultimate decision always to them. All right. Okay. Just, uh, Jum Jumur, one question I had yeah. is, uh, see, uh, Mohit and Ankur, we, we recently did a healthcare study on housing, right? which highlighted the shortage of hospital beds, medical care facilities, and also the fact that residential development in a city is not aligned to where the healthcare is, right? So healthcare tends to be concentrated in one part of the city. But uh, one of the things which we have found, right, when working on uh, uh, these projects is that typically these developments are at the in the peripheral areas of the city. So you can take like a Bivadi, you can take like a Nera, uh, right? You can find that they are all the outskirts of the city. And so, so people who are interested really say, you know, I mean, I'm not comfortable with my parents living like so far away from the city center. So why is that? Is that a, is that more of a, a cost of land in a development issue? 
Yeah. So, Mani, I'd like to add to this question. You've like preempted uh, my question. So, we've been receiving a lot of audience questions, and their question is not just about the location itself. Their point is that you know, since these are peripheral areas, land cost will obviously be much cheaper. But these uh, projects are not priced at a relatively affordable uh, price point. So, maybe you could address you know both the points. One is, of course, the location itself, and one is this uh, question about uh, costing. So, uh, Ankur, what would you like to tell us? So, first question, I think uh, Mohit had answered it. So, you, we always have a tie with two kinds of hospital, one the nearest and the one the further, uh, the best. Okay. So, the whole idea is that once an emergency happens, he's stabilized in a hospital which is decent, which gets the stuff done. And if they need some specialized help, then they go to the, the best hospital, wherever that is. So, that actually addresses, so we've been, you know, our senior living in Bivadi has been there for, 15 years now, uh, lots of seniors have gone through various kinds of uh, problems uh, and, and everybody has come out to a hospital, been safe, been handled well. So from a medical perspective, that takes care of the larger problem. From a perspective, why do we choose outside areas for us? It's been, uh, so one, we were suburban developers as a general, but more importantly, I think we like to give a lot of open spaces our green spaces are the largest in the country. I think pollution-free environment, infrastructure, which we can give at an affordable, more affordable price than what we would be able to do in a city. Uh, we are able to give a lot more than what they would have got if they were in a city-centric uh, thing. And we are creating the community outskirts. So for us, I think the idea that you get a pollution-free environment, a larger open space, a larger home, better facilities is the driver of us to go outskirts. And you're saying that is what rationalizes the price that you're asking for? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Mohit, what's your take on this? Like with most of my answers, the answer is apples and oranges. Uh, and there okay. is enough uh, fruit lovers. There are people who will want outskirts, okay. less pollution. There are others who say, I'm living the urban life. I want life around me. And they will be inside. Uh, of course, the size of the asset, the openness will be dictated by the cost of the land and that will be reflected in the cost of the asset they purchase. That's simple mathematics. Yeah. Uh, however, what is true for both the apple and the orange, and I'm sure uh, 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 Uncle will endorse this, our decision on site selection, the matrix that we use to rate the quality of a site, uh, right on top uh, has travel time, distance, quality of hospital, right? Because it may not be very important to you at 55, but it keeps getting more and more important over time. Absolutely. And uh, my, the number of people, and I think there is data to support this, the number of people who go to a hospital from a senior living community is lesser than the number of people who go to hospitals from non-senior living communities. And the reason goes back to being identify problems being identified and addressed earlier. But the fact of the matter is, it is a big uh, provider of peace of mind for 365 days a year. The fact that a hospital is close by. And yeah. peace of mind is one of the biggest drivers of good health. Right. So even though you may not need it, it is one of the drivers of site selection for us, which is not just distance, but travel time and travel time at peak time yeah. and uh, quality of the hospital because the bed to bed needs to be 30 to 45 minutes max, right? Yeah. Because once you know that, God forbid, if my mom or dad needs something and they are 30 to 45 minutes th through a cashless pre-existing arrangement into a hospital bed, gives them, the parents and everybody a, such a lot of peace of mind that the fact that you never actually need it doesn't even come into the picture. Yeah. So I think in the interest of time, I'll sort of wind down to my last question. So uh, generally, I, my last question is always like a big picture question. I'd like to start with Mani, actually, because he's spoken a little less than uh, all our other webinars. So Mani, what I'd like to understand is, what is your assessment? Uh, I want a two-pronged assessment. A, do you think, uh, you know, in the future, the potential of this segment is set to boom? And do you also see a correlation? between encouraging a silver economy 
and the growth of this uh, segment? Do you think that the two are correlated? Sure. So, so when you look at India today, right? Uh, I mean, if you look at the, the number of people over sixty-five, I think yeah. it is uh, close to what it's around fifteen or close. So it's around eight to ten percent of the population, right? We are we are one of the youngest populations in the world, right? and sixty-five percent of the population is below thirty-five. But uh, if you fast forward to two thousand and thirty or two thousand and fifty, right? It's just going to triple in size. So you you're looking at uh, you know at a country with 30 or 40 crore people about the age of 65 yeah. and uh, life expectancy in india is just going to increase from 67 to 70 years it's probably going to go up to 80 years yeah. and 30 to 40 crores is more than the population of a country like the united states so uh, i mean I, I mean the demand is uh, is going to be pretty huge out here yeah. right uh, and when you're talking of uh, this uh, you, you you're talking of uh, in, potentially you know growing other parts of the silver economy like uh, like for example tools to keep people engaged right uh, doing art and crafts like online education so there's a whole infrastructure uh, you know that really needs to support this economy uh, but first and foremost I, I i do hope that ankur and mohit will uh, you know kind of grow very rapidly and because i think there's going to be a sh- severe shortage of uh, yeah. such facilities uh, right in in the economy going forward so. yeah so mohit uh, like many established you know demand we don't see a problem the supply pipeline yes so what are your thoughts you know what does the future potential look like and yes do you see a correlation between the silver economy encouraging the silver economy and the segment growing i'm going to answer that in two parts one okay. is with regards to uh, what you're calling the silver economy. Okay. I think money is 100% right. The, the percentage of population above the age of 60 is going to be 20% yeah. in the not too distant future, right? Um, and the people who have the money, the willingness, and the time to yeah. enjoy is this cohort. If you yeah. look at the youngsters, they neither have the money or the time. Yeah. Right? If you look at the middle age, they have the, mo- the money, but they don't have the time. It's only when you reach a particular age that you have both the, the money, the desire, and the time. Yeah. And physical fitness levels are only improving. Uh, you will have extremely fit 60, 70 year olds. So it's not just about uh, geriatric friendly leisure travel. It's going, these guys are going to be zip lining uh, from tree to tree. At the age of 65, uh, the people who are running marathons even today at 100 are yeah. not uh, superhuman. They're just people who've embraced fitness uh, as, as a regime for themselves. So what I'm saying to you is that the silver, the silver economy is going to be the place where the action is. So if Colgate is today advertising their toothpaste for the confident 60-year-old woman who during the pandemic has met a 65-year-old man, yeah. it's not... It's the beginning of the change that is going to come, right? Um, So that's one side of it. The second side of it, where I feel the country needs to do more for what is going to be one-fifth of the population. If you look at, if the average uh, age or life expectancy is going to increase, many people think of that as good news. It's actually to the contrary, because what gets added it's five years towards the end of the life. So instead of 80, you're going to live to 85. Guess what's going to happen to your medical bills in those five additional years? Your earnings start at 60. Now you've added five of the most expensive years of your life at the end, right? What's, what do we have as an insurance product for them? The answer is nothing, right? If you say, I've created a real estate asset, which is now worth three crores, but if you're living in it, you can't monetize it because our reverse mortgage is so uh, poorly uh, designed that you can't take advantage of the, 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 the product that you've created in your lifetime. Third, if you keep a maid, you pay her, unstructured economy, no leave, no nothing, and you don't pay GST. You move into a senior living community, you get everything those employees get provident fund and ESI coverage and everything, but you pay GST. Yeah. Right? So there are many things that the government can do to make, and the day this 20% also becomes a 20% vote bank, 
is the day when things will probably change fast until then it's our job to keep talking about it. thank you so uh, ankur you get to have the last word so what's your last word uh, <laughs> so one uh, there was a question which was an interesting question i just want to take a second just saying about uh, uh, can, can my father just my father is single can he move into a senior living and i think uh, one of the biggest things in senior living is about 10 to 30% in our senior living the population is single and that's a oh. great area to be at and that's the kind of relationship you build uh, hopefully we advise when your couples to move in but if you're single most welcome it's a great place to be uh from a market perspective i think uh, you know we can we can keep talking about the demand side and i think uh, we as uh, what i appreciate about what housing.com is doing and you guys are doing is i think the knowledge is lacking so at the end of the day what we really need is the demand side may be very high but we need to yeah. spread the word very very strongly to the consumer that there's an a great option available and all the challenges of your you know hopefully you live longer in senior living with less health requirement with less medical bill which will actually make a lot more sense and that's been proven in the us uh, 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 for a number of years and we are seeing similar things happening in our senior living so from a perspective i think uh, we are excited we are looking at doing a lot more land deals we are already doing a lot more land deals and and signing up more projects to do more uh, and i believe the biggest uh, win we can have is as consumers get knowledgeable about, about this product i think this is going to be a huge huge demand coming because from a product the proof is already there is just that more people need to know about it absolutely thank you that's a great note uh, to end the discussion on thank you panelists you know for your very candid inputs thank you audience members for being with us that's all for today but we will be seeing you soon till then stay safe and stay healthy bye bye thank you so much mohit and ankur pleasure thank to have thank you, you. you so much thank you mani thank you thank ankur bye bye thanks bye bye bye